and welcome to the Multicultural AFL Football Show, Week 24 by round for finalists. The last week of footy commenced on Friday night from the MCG with Collingwood beating Essendon. Sydney rolled over the Saints, North Melbourne won by less than a goal against the Demons, while the Cats gave a Carlton a footy lesson. In other games, the Giants monstered the goal cost for a much-needed confidence booster before the finals, and well done to Jeremy Cameron for kicking a back of nine to snatch the Coleman. Disaster over in the West as the Eagles went down to Hawthorne and out of the top four, the Ducks make the finals at the expense of the Adelaide Crows. Richmond were too good for the Lions, who held their position on the ladder for a home final, and the, go and the going nowhere match between the power and Frio, so poor Adelaide decimated the Fremantle. All of the reviews and our special guest, former Carlton Blues star Ange Christou, no Houghton Spartans player and their president George Demetriou, will be here to talk about their fifth grand final coming up soon. I am Vanessa Gatica and I'm joined by my two co-panelists, Javier Sincan and Gabriel De Angelo. Hello guys. Hello Vanessa. Vanessa, Javier. Round 23 kick off last Friday night from the MCG with Collingwood beaten at the plated Essendon side by the 11 points the hard way. Sydney gave their retirees a game to be excited about by beating the Saints by 45 points, which really may see interim coach being overlooked to take over the permanent coaching reins. The Roos just beat the Demons and very disappointing for Ben Brown to start the day four goals in front for the Coleman medal and then only kick two goals for the day to miss out on the coveted prize. The Cattery was buzzing in the wild and wet weather as the long decimated Carlton, but that was another deal rubber. Javier, how did you see those games? Well, um, it was kind of dead rubber, that game, um, Geelong versus Carlton, we always knew, but I believe um, it was good um, good good platform for David Teague to, to try a few things because yeah. that's all what game had in for Carlton at that stage and uh, with the Collingwood versus Essendon uh, I'm not even sure that whether Essendon went in with the frame, mind frame of winning and uh, that game because they had a few players rested so they were more focusing on the finals so I, that result doesn't surprise me too much <coughs> um, so I, how much that workout we will see uh, later on because I don't really blame them because they've had a uh, bad run with the injuries this season. So I, uh, it, this move might prove good uh, for their uh, team, especially in the finals. Um, Swans are about 300 for Buddy and uh, he's a, he was able to kick about like four goals aside and all the retirees got a beautiful set of side. Uh, it was a perfect day for Sydney, uh, Sydney Swans and their fans. So. I, I believe that that's how it was expected and that's how it uh, turned out to be. Yeah. But because St Kilda well, wasn't going to do too much uh, well over there anyway. And the sad part was um, Ben Brown missing that uh, Coleman medal letter. But it gives me immense pleasure because that proves me right and him wrong. Uh, <laughs> as we talked in the last week. But yeah, th their, uh, their players should have focused on more, uh, giving more balls to him. And then I, he should have uh, got a couple of more goals out of it. Mm -hmm. Because that game didn't really have much of an impact in any way. So he could have been their Coleman medal letter. But uh, all credit to uh, Jeremy Cameron, the way he played. And... Uh, Still, you have to kick those goals to uh, grab a, um, a bag of goals. So he did that. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, you did make a good point with that game against uh, North Melbourne and, and Melbourne game. A at the same time, I do feel sorry for Ben Brown, but at the same time, he was probably one of the, the real shining lights at a really mm. bad season for North Melbourne. So you have to give him a lot of credit and congratulations for to Ben Brown for at least coming close to at least getting the Coleman medal because he's had mm -hmm. yet again another great season. Uh, I think that the North Melbourne faithful, I, I know because my sister and my brother-in-law and all that, the big uh, North Melbourne fans, they are truly grateful mm -hmm. that Ben Brown is there at the club. So he's, he's just amazing. But on your point with the uh, Sydney and St Kilda game, what you said about how maybe that could affect the possibility of Brett Ratton becoming coach full time, I don't know. I know that Brett Ratton and Robert Harvey have, uh, have been interviewed for the role. I think they'll stick with Brett Ratton purely because he's already there and he's cheap. So maybe that's the reason why he'll, he'll be uh, coach. But it's extremely disappointing 
the uh, lack of accuracy from St Kilda. I think that St Kilda needs to hire Brett Ratton and fire their goal-kicking coach because mm. this is just ridiculous, the amount of goals that they miss, and not under pressure, but set shots in front of goal. They lost last week because of that against mm. Carlton. So that's something that they need to fix. And uh, the game, Geelong against Carlton, Yes, it was a dead rubber, but also at the same time, it was a good chance for Carlton to really sort of show everyone that there is a team that, mm. that's worth cheering for next season. And David Teague, I think that he's a, it's his opportunity to sort of experiment a little bit because mm. even though he's now the full-time coach, the pressure is off, so to speak. Mm. No one's expecting them to do well against Geelong, especially at their home ground. So he's got the chance to sort of test a few things and a few ideas and to test some plays in different positions. So it was that chance to at least do that. So, um, yeah, it was a dead rubber, but they at least you know, did well. But Geelong, you know, we'll talk about them in greater detail uh, soon. And the same with Collingwood and, and Essendon. Gabriel, what do you think about the Sunday games? Well, uh, the Giants against Gold Coast, no surprises there. I think Hawthorne and, and uh, West Coast, West Coast have a lot to think about because Essendon are going to come really, really hard against West Coast. Mm -hmm. So West Coast at home aren't so uh, impenetrable. It's not so much of a fortress anymore. So we've got to see what's going to happen because Essendon have never lost against West Coast in the finals. Um, Western Bulldogs against Adelaide. Congratulations to the Western Bulldogs for making it. And there's a lot of echoes of 2016, which I know you guys are very excited about. And Richmond and Brisbane, well, uh, we'll see what's going to happen uh, in the finals because I think that Brisbane, um, they, they had a little bit of stage fight because it's the MCG, but at home they'll be very, very strong. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, with Giants and Gold Coast, I believe uh, that wasn't a good preparation for Giants though, but nonetheless a win is win. So that I wouldn't say that a good preparation for the finals though. And with Houghton versus Eagles, look, Eagles probably can introspect and say what went wrong. And uh, I'm pretty sure they can bounce back the way they're playing at MCG and home. I think they will bounce back. And uh, with Western Bulldogs, well, uh, they, they're probably the most uh, prepared team at the moment, the way yeah. it looks like. Just because of the fact that um, they had no issues whatsoever before, as in as far as uh, the whole midfield and other things were concerned, it was the inaccuracy in front of the goals. And they've overcome in a big, big way. So they're looking really dangerous for the uh, finals. So hopefully they can go all the way. Uh, they're on their... Uh, best position, number seventh. So I see how I go. And Richmond, I believe that gave Brisbane a very good uh, hint what's, what's to come forward. So I believe uh, they would have got a very good preparation. Um, they had a hard game and that too at MCG. I believe they'll be ready for the finals now. So Port versus Freer. I don't know, we just have to look at next year, uh, what, what, what's going to happen yeah. with, over, over there. Port Adelaide, Ken Hinckley got the job, but over there, Freer, we got the new, we will see the new coach. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Thanks guys, we will be back with all the special guests next after this show break, so stick around. Back again with us tonight, we welcome former Carlton Blues star Ange Christou, now Houghton Spartans player and George Demetriou, the Spartans president. Welcome. Well, thank, thank you very much for, us. for having thank us. You. Thank you. Ange, you have played 151 games at Carlton, 1995 Premiership player with the Blues, 1995 All-Australian selection and made the Greek AFL team of the century. Looking back, you must have enjoyed your football with the Blues, being the dominant force in your playing career. Yes, um, yeah, I did enjoy it uh, very much so. Uh, look, as a kid, I, I aspired to, to becoming a footballer. Um, never, th never thought I'd make it, but um, just through you know, sheer grit and determination and patience and having you know, great support, you know, great you know, friends and, and fam you know, family members right behind me. Um, and also, you know, obviously on merit and, and playing hard and training hard, I actually made it. So, you know, I, I, I was always pinching myself that, you know, one day I should make it, will I make it, when I make it. And when I did, I was like, I, I just couldn't believe it. But um, again, like I said, uh, you know, it was, it was an exciting time of my life, um, a good 10 or 11 years of that. And, um, you know, winning a premiership, you know, also opens doors for you as well. So I really, really enjoyed it, yeah. You've had a distinguished career, Ange, and it's great that you are dedicating your time in developing the grassroots of football with AFL Victoria. Can you tell our viewers about your coaching courses in the northern regions? Well, let me start by saying that Fib threw me under the bus, which is uh, George's brother. At the time, it was a couple of years ago, uh, actually, uh, in fact, and um, he asked me to present to, to the level one coaches and I was like, you know, I was like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah, just give them an insight of your, of your career and, and your journey. 
and just talk about you know the importance of you know helping develop you know community football. So I did that as well, touched up on that, and also just um, touched up on you know on the coaching aspect of things, on you know understanding um, talent and, and managing heaps, uh, lots of personalities because I'm um, you know. People come from all walks of life, and uh, you know it's kind of difficult. But I actually really enjoyed it, yeah, and I'm glad I did it. So, do you enjoy being uh, an Auskick champion and um, helping down the Auskick centres? Yes, yeah, so I, I did uh, at the time. I, I had six or seven centres uh, in the northern region, and um, I was coordinating and facilitating centres, just making sure they they follow the program. And uh, I was more or less a, a mentor and a guide, yeah. And, and again, loved it. Loved every minute of it. Uh, and you've played in two premierships with the Hawthorne Spartans and about to play your third. How did George recruit you and how did you find playing footy with a multicultural team? Gee whiz, that, that was going back, I think, six or so years ago. Um, uh, George, uh, George knew a, a fellow ex-Hawthorne uh, player, Ange Lekas, mm -hmm. and um, he kind of you know, asked me to, to, to meet these guys, Fib and George, and uh, I did so, and um, you know, with, you know, over a coffee, was it was that quick. Yeah. It was over a coffee yeah. that I, you know, I just jumped on board and uh, you know, wanted to help and assist. But look, I, w I don't think I'll be playing because uh, I, I am injured, but uh, I did win a couple of uh, premierships with these guys and I think we're playing our fifth this uh, next couple of weeks. Yeah, that's, that's right. But um, can I just say that um, Andrew has been fantastic around the club. He's there every training night. He's there every Saturday. And he's there coaching the players, mentoring uh, teaching them about kicking, talking to them, just the advice that the experience that he's got as an ex-AFL champion, the players love it and they listen to him and they uh, they get inspired by it. And he's been fantastic around the club. Mm -hmm. I just Thanks, George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've also obtained your level one coach's accreditation. Have you got aspirations to coach or, or as part of your role as the Spartans or even at Carlton? Uh, most definitely not. I don't want to coach, but uh, especially at the highest level. Uh, maybe, maybe juniors. I'm, I'm, I'd be interested in you know, junior coaching, but um, yeah, as as far as that goes, it won't be above the junior level. Yeah, so I'm just happy where I am at the moment. George, Swange, what are you doing at the moment? Gee, the <laughs> 64, 66 million dollar question. My goodness. <laughs> well, you were, you asked me before that um, yeah, if I was happy to to coach and. I believe it truly it consumes your life, mm -hmm. but today I'm actually, and I'm happy to say this, that um, I've bought into a business and mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a fish uh, restaurant, fish and chip restaurant um, in Northcote, which will be directly next door to my wife's, Northcote <laughs> the Garni restaurant. Yeah, so, the Northcote Plaza. So God help me, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll need some help and assistance. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to, to the opportunity here as well, back in the workforce. Mm -hmm. The Spartans have had a great year in finishing on top of the ladder on the home and away season. And you won the second semi on Saturday. So what happens from here? When and where is the grand final? We'll know definitely, Vanessa, next Monday. But it looks as though it's probably going to be on probably the Sunday, the 8th of September. We'll know the time and the venue next Monday. And I'll, I'll let everyone know. But uh, yeah, we get a week's rest but it's definitely in a fortnight. So we're looking forward to it. The players will be training again Wednesday night, uh, Saturday, and back the following Wednesday. So they're pretty keen and uh, quietly confident of uh, taking us to another uh, premiership. That'll be, um, we won five. Um, Played in five, won two. We've, we've won four grand finals in eight seasons. This is our ninth mm. season. Wow. Um, nice. And hopefully this will be the fifth premiership in nine seasons, but we've played. This will be the eighth grand final that the team will be will be in this on in the fortnight. So mm -hmm. we're really looking forward to it. And um, uh, all I can say is we're really thankful our players to, to thank all our players, our officials, our trainers, our coaching staff, sponsors, and supporters. Um, we also want to take a big thank you to our the Hawthorne Amateur Football Club. They've been fantastic with their support the cooperation and um, working together with us and um, we're really thankful to everyone. It's not just the players, it's a combined team effort by everyone and um, it's really great to be part of a, a team like that. So we're really looking forward to that match in, the, in a fortnight. Okay. 
Amazing. Good congratulations. Luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, George. And uh, one last question for Ange before you go. Uh, do you miss the big Carlton crow going woof every time you kick the ball? Oh, no. When I was playing, look, it, was, it, it gave me a bit of a buzz. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little insight on, on that. Um, it was in 1993 where it, where it, where it derived from. Um, it was after a Brisbane game at Optus Oval. And one of the reporters came up to me after the game and they said, oh, well done, you know, you, you played well. And did you hear those chants? And I said, yeah, what was it? Like, and they said, oh, wolf. And I said, am I a dog? <laughs> and they said, no, it actually, um, it was, uh, there was an ex-player of Carlton uh -huh. That, yeah. uh, that had that, um, that cult following. And I said, who's that? And he said, they said, it's Val Perovic. And I said, who is Val Perovic? And like, I was so embarrassed and I had to do some research and uh, certainly quickly found out who Val Perovic was. Yeah, but uh, it did give me a buzz, yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Anch and George, for coming in tonight. And good luck with the grand final. Anch Christo, former Carlton great, and George Demetrio, president of the Houghton Spartans. We will be back with more after the break, so stick around. Welcome back. We will leave our comprehensive finals coverage for the next Thursday. But tonight we have a brand new AFL film shot in India about an Aussie rules game, Loving Village. Two weeks ago, we have Sudip Chakraborty as our guest, who told us the AFL had made a film about the AFL game, Mad Village, which was supported by the AFL's former ambassador for the game in India none other than former Australian cricket captain Ricky Ponting. It is a fascinating, well-produced short film of our game abroad. The main sport, of course, in India is the cricket. But a lot of other sports are growing and luckily back in 2008, Ricky Ponting introduced the Aussie rules football in India. खेला इंडियार मैं भारतवर्षे प्रथम फुटबल हाथे तुले निल प्रैक्टिस शुरू हलो चार जन ऐले नहीं मटे प्रथम ओखान फुटी शुरू हमारे बाड़ी जेते धरें अठारो थ माइल रास्ता गाड़ी दिए जाते जे तरह स्टेशन पाए स्टेशने जे सैकेल रेखे अन् गाड़ी को व्यवस्था करते सैकेले जित जे सैकेल रेखे तरह कलकाय प्रैक्टिस करत तीन मास प्रैक्टिस कर लो करारे और सूझ पेल अस्ट्रेलिया जावर अस्ट्रेलिया एस चिंता भावना निल खेला के आो डेवलप करब और भलो खेल ये स्कूल टैंगरा कल उच्च माध्यमिक हाई स्कूल छात्र छात्री में प्रैक्ट शुरू करी इन खेल में दुशो थ आढ़ाई ऐले मे प्रैक्टिस कर इखान ऐला नैशनल डिस्ट्रिके खेल सूझ पे
Australian rules football is the fastest growing sport in India. We have been developing the sport since 2008. 2014, we set up the National Federation. The main part of our Aussie football has grown in recent years is definitely eastern part of India. So Jharkhand and West Bengal, they are the best of the best teams at the moment. খেলা শুরু করি তখন একটা স্টেটের টিম নিয়ে প্রথম ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কাপ খেলতে যাওয়া হয়েছিল তারপর থেকে এই এফএল ইন্ডিয়ার সাথে যুক্ত থাকার সুবাদ এবং যারা আমাদের আর ভলান্টিয়াররা আছে তারা সবাই সবার ঐকান্তিক প্রচেষ্টাই আজকে আমরা এগারোটা স্টেটে পদার্পণ করতে পেরেছি এবং বেঙ্গলের দায়িত্বে থাকার সুবাদে আমি টোটাল চোদ্দোটা ডিস্ট্রিক্ট কভার করেছি আমরা এখানে প্রত্যেক বছর একটা করে স্টেট চ্যাম্পিয়নশিপ করি সেই স্টেট চ্যাম্পিয়নশিপে লাস্ট ইয়ারে আমরা একটা মেয়েদের দুটো টিমের একটা এক্সিবিশান ম্যাচ করিয়েছি এই বছরে আমরা আরও মেয়েদের টিম নিয়ে এসে এই টুর্নামেন্টে সামিল করব সেটা আমাদের লক্ষ্য আমি খরদায় থাকি আমি প্রথম ফুটবল খেলতাম তারপরে আমাদের ওখানে আরিফদা এই খেলাটা ফুটি অস্ট্রেলিয়ান স্কুল ফুটবল আমাকে এই খেলাটার সাথে ইন্ট্রোডিউস করায় এবং তারপরে দু হাজার থেকে আমি খেলাটা স্টার্ট করি বিশ্বদা সেই সময় থেকে কোচের ভূমিকা পালন করে এসছেন এবং খুব ভালোভাবেই আমাদের শিখিয়েছেন তার তার দিয়ে অনেক কিছু শিখেছি এবং এখনও শিখছি We look forward to having 20 state teams sometime soon uh, so that uh, Sport Authority of India and the Indian government recognizes Australian rules football as a recognized sport in India. And what will that help? Uh, Indian players or even the state level players who play Australian rules football will get the same benefits that all other sports get in India. So the sport is already making inroads and a big impact and just watch this space. That was fascinating, don't you think, Javier? Yeah, it was, it was. And uh, I believe with the village um, like that and a lot of youngsters coming in, that gives them a good platform too. And it's kind of like symbiotic um, relationship between the AFL and the people over there. They get an opportunity um, to play this uh, great game and then AFL is able to expand to the other countries, which which is normally their vision with, um, with the Chinese games and everything. So I, to see that much happening over there at the grassroots level, I believe that's fascinating. Well, I, what I enjoyed most about that whole documentary is the enthusiasm that they had, that they were just so uh, full of energy and full of joy to be able to play. It was like a, a little boy with a new toy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just yeah. so good to see that sort of enthusiasm. And um, I hope, you know, that they continue to play it and they enjoy it. and that they keep um, watching and playing and loving it. Thank you, guys. That's it for another week. I thank our special guests for tonight, Ansh Christou and George Demetrio. You've been watching and listening to the Multicultural AFL Footy Show all around Australia and the Community Radio Network, Community TV, and on Aurora TV Foxtel. We are also online through the NEMBC's AFL Footy website. 
See you next week for a detailed preview of the tips for the first week of AFL Finance Footy. I am Vanessa Gatica. I'm Habib Singh. I'm Gabriel D'Angelo. And thank you for watching.